Hey YouTube Live, and today I'm going to show you how I made a card. Of course, I got to scoop my my uh, paper up here a little bit because I'm always off center when I start these. Um, I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set and the Coordinating Sunflowers dies that are now actually bundled together um, for a short time in the month of March. Stamp it up, brought the bundle back, and they're giving you 20% off the price. So. It is a great deal. I'll talk with you a little bit more about that um, in a second, but uh, this is the bundle that we're going to be using today. Well, this is the card we're going to be making, and um, I do love the wood grain papers. <laughs> I can't help myself. And um, just got a couple of sunflowers on it. It's kind of an easy little card. The coloring on it, uh, you will see as I do it, is not very difficult at all. I'm not excellent at coloring, um, but this one's really easy. The The sunflower stamp set makes it super, super simple to color. So hopefully you... Um, uh, we'll pick up your blends and give it a try. So, hey, Bree, glad you're joining today. Thanks so much. And uh, this is the Celebrate Sunflower stamp set. Hey, Karen. And again, like I said, it's on sale for 20% off uh, with the coordinating dies during the month of March. So it's a great deal. And um, hey, Heather, thanks for hopping in. I'm glad you like my card too. I think I, could, I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. I love the I love the sunflowers and I really love the wood green. So, you know, all good. So, hey, Jean, thanks for hopping in from Oregon as well. So this stamp set has been around for a little while. It's been in, um, I can't even remember which catalog it came out in a little while ago. Um, but it's got dies that coordinate with it, and I love it. Love the images. And again, if you're new to coloring, this is a great set because you really don't have to be good at coloring. I'll show you. <laughs> it's super, super easy to color with. Um, and then we've got the coordinating sunflowers dies. This larger open die cuts out the, obviously the stamped sunflower image. And then we've got a couple of them that cut out the stamped leaves. This actually cuts out a really cool kind of overlay basically for the stamped sunflower or the die cut sunflower. So you can use them in coordination. You don't have to, obviously I didn't on this card, um, but they do coordinate together. The, you can line them up so that the little little um, edges all match up. And then there are some accessory pieces as well and a little leaf here. So it's a great stamp set. Oh, there's a flower center too. Uh, great stamp set, great die set, um, and definitely one that you should get if you don't have it. Um, hey, Danette, and I see uh, Penny's here and Barbara as well. Thanks for joining. A couple other things that I used on this, I did use, as I use on pretty much all my cards, my stitched rectangles dies. I used the third largest one of the rectangles, and I did cut, I don't know how well you can see it on here, but I did cut the, the rectangular panel, the pool party one, um, with that die. And then I also used the um, rectangular opening here in the picture this dies. Um, this is all one die, which you can actually cut like an entire panel of cardstock if you want to and kind of have little peek throughs to the back. Or you can use it like I am and just use a smaller piece of cardstock and then use it to cut sentiments or images or whatever you want out. Um, this one is a good one too. Lots of good circle sizes in that one for layering and die cutting uh, sentiments and anything else you want to. Hey, Daryl, thanks for joining. And it uh, looks like uh stamp it with jilly okay bling i saw bling everything and i'm like what the heck anyway <laughs> so thanks so much for joining today all right um a couple other things or one other thing that i used on it is the tasteful textiles 3d embossing folder and i usually call it the wrong thing i think it's tasteful textiles or tasteful textures but i think it's tasteful textiles i don't know why i can't get the name straight um Tasteful textiles, I'm not sure. 3D embossing folder, um, which again, this is one from the annual catalog. So that's one I did use it. Again, I don't know how well you can see it on the background. The pool party panel is embossed. Uh, it shows up in your hand, but it's a little harder to see it because it's a really um, kind of a muted texture um, that it adds to the cardstock. All right, a couple of things before we get going. Uh, Stampin' Up! does have their Waves of the Ocean uh, product collection that is available now to order for uh, everybody. It's a beautiful collection. It's got some designer paper, foil, gems, dies, and a stamp set. Um, you can use buy everything together in one full swing with just um, one item number if you're interested in doing that. You can also get the items individually, so you can get just the stamp set or just the dies, or you can get just the bundle. And then the beautiful papers and gems, you can get those all individually as well. And um, just so you know, the stamp set and dies and the bundle pricing are going to be carrying forward into the next annual catalog, which is the 2022 to 2023. But these beautiful products are not, and you'll definitely want them. So just go ahead and order them now. Uh, so then you're not sad. <laughs> so, so anyhow, just so you know that the, um, the stamp set and dies are carrying over the pretty coordinating products are not. 
All right. Um, oh, and I guess I should explain the savings are in bloom bundle first. Um, so Stampin' Up! has also got a sale that I briefly chatted about earlier on a whole bunch of uh, bundles, as well as the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. For the month of March, all of those items are 20% off. So it's a huge bunch of bundles. Um, Lots of really good ones in there. Um, and actually, the Celebrate Sunflowers was put together in a bundle again, and it's 20% off uh, for anybody who is interested in ordering it. Um, and again, that's the one I'm using today, so very pretty. The details are on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com, so you can see all of that uh, information out there and find a link to check out which bundles are on sale if you're interested in doing that. So, uh, thanks, Daryl. I'm glad you like it. So, and Jean as well. So, um, it is tasteful textiles. One of these days I will learn to write it all down and then I'll figure it out, but I never do. <laughs> Cause I think I'll remember and then I get talking and then I can't. So um, one other little bonus that I'm offering for the month of March is anyone that places an order of $50 or greater with me, will get a big bundle tutorial or tutorials bundle, I'm sorry, from me. Um, there are seven different stamp set bundles that we've created tutorials in the past, as well as a new one, Daffodil Daydream. Um, and they are some of the bundles that are on sale, actually, um, this month. So if you order $50 or greater through me during the month of March, you're going to get all seven of the tutorials, which I think they're like 30 some, I haven't counted them. One, one of these days I will, and then it'll be the end of March and all, anyway. Um, but there, I think there are like 36 projects, 35 projects, something like that, um, in these bundles, uh, or in this tutorial bundle. So you are gonna get it if you order $50 or greater uh, through my online store, through me, during the month of March. And, um, yeah, it's a, you know, like I said, lots and lots of tutorials, lots of pretty projects. And uh, let me know if you have questions. Again, the details are posted on my blog. Um, one thing to know about the $50 in product, it doesn't have to be any of the sale bundles. It can be any, anything, whatever it is that you like to purchase from Stampin' Up. Okay, so let's get going on the card before I get uh, distracted again. So, okay, so we've got... Um, a card base, which is early espresso. And this one is cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. And this one, it does matter. It needs to be a top fold card just because it's got the um, twine wrapped or the, the uh, linen thread wrapped around the card front. Um, so if you don't put the linen thread on, you can use whatever card opening you would like. But if you wanna add the linen thread to it the way that I have, then you will need to make sure that you have a top fold card. And I have a piece of In Good Taste Designer Series paper. Again, that's from the annual catalog, and it's a huge pack of paper. Um, and it's got a bunch of wood grains, and there's like tiles and painted look images and plaster look, and it's just a really cool pack of paper. So if you don't have that one yet, it's definitely well worth getting it. And just gonna adhere that. That should be cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, so it should fit perfectly on the card front if I've cut everything correctly. Um, just adhering it down with a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue. And then I'm going to set that aside and we will do a little bit of stamping. Now I have done some of this ahead because it gets a little monotonous watching me color the images over and over again. Um, but I didn't want to do all of it ahead because I wanted to show you how I colored the sunflower. And let me grab my Tuxedo Black Memento ink and I've got my sunflower image from the Celebrate Sunflower stamp set already all set up on the block. And again, just using Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And I've got to ink, ink, ink it. Um, all right, I think I've got a pretty good image there. And I, I did put a little dot here, so pay attention to where my little dot is, and I'll explain to you why it is I put the little dot on here. Although, yeah, let me, well, let me turn it this way. And I'm just gonna stamp it on a scrap of uh, basic white cardstock. It doesn't need to be completely on the cardstock panel because as you can see, I'm gonna cut into a corner basically. Um, so I'm gonna be cutting about half of the flower off anyway, so no reason to be overly concerned about um, how it is that that ends up being stamped on the paper. All right, um, so I had my little blue dot and it was generally over in this area and I have marked my die set, which I'll show you in a minute with a coordinating blue dot and that will hopefully help me to line it up a little bit faster when I go to die cut it. All right, and I'll show you that in a second too. Okay, so I've got So Saffron Stampin' Blends, and I'm gonna start with the light So Saffron, and um, as you're gonna see, I'm gonna really take tons and tons of time, not at all, uh, <laughs> to color this image, and I'm basically just gonna scratch on color here with the light So Saffron first, 
and just kind of want to get the color on it. And it doesn't need to be really nicely and neatly colored. Um, this is one of those kind of artsy looking images. So basically, like I said, I'm just kind of scratching the color on with the light first and trying to get most of it covered. All right. And gonna keep turning this around and keep on scratching the color on. And then we're gonna come back in with the dark So Saffron Blends and add a little bit of dark ink to it. And then we may come back and do a little bit of additional blending with the light, but maybe not. It'll kind of depend on um, what it looks like when I get done with it. So, all right, so I've got that, the color put on. I've got my Dark So Saffron Blends. And all I'm gonna do is come in here and stamp it up. This image in particular, it, I find really easy to color because they've added kind of the areas Give you, giving you a couple of really good hints about where you should add in some of the darker shading on it. Um, by basically, they've put in the shading for you and you just kind of trace over the top of it with your dark stamp and blends marker. And uh, ta-da, you've got a beautifully blended, um, looks like you know what you're doing, well colored, <laughs> at least hopefully. <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm not an excellent person at coloring, um, but if, as long as you kind of follow along with the guide that Stampin' Up! has given you in um, adding a little bit of the dark coloring to the areas that are shaded already on the stamp, then you're going to look like a pro and you're going to look like you know exactly what you're doing, even if you have no idea. So like I said, this is, that's what I love about this stamp set. It's super, super easy to color. All right, so we've got, we're almost done with the coloring um, of the sunflower petals. So there are a couple areas here where I didn't get quite as much color on as maybe I would like. And again, they don't need to be 100% colored in perfectly just because it's a little bit of an artsy looking image. And um, I actually kind of like that it looks a little bit lighter in some areas. Um, I'm gonna go around here along the center of the sunflower and just make sure that that is all colored in um, with the Stampin' Blends marker. But that's it for the coloring on the, the actual petals part. I've got uh, light and dark crumb cake that I'm gonna be using to color in the flower center. So I'm gonna start with my light. And again, you'll see that I'm not spending much time on this. I'm just taking the, I've got, I'm using the bullet tip. You can use either one on this. Um, since it's a smaller area, I just went ahead and grabbed the bullet tip and that was the one I happened to open, so. Um, but just take a little crumb cake light, put that on, cover the entire thing, and then Got my dark crumb cake, and I'm just gonna add color to the center of it again. Just kind of trying to keep it in the areas that are already shaded, so it gives you some good indication to where you should put the dark shading. And then I'm gonna come back in with my um, light blends, and we're just gonna kind of blend the two together on this one. Um, for my crumb cake markers, there's kind of a, a bit of a difference between um, the, the light and the dark. Not all of them have a difference, but this one, mine are kind of significantly different. So I do tend to blend in a little bit more with my light than I normally would. But that's it. The sunflower is all done and colored. And would that take me, I don't know, two or three minutes? <laughs> so it's super simple. That's why I love, love, love this stamp set. So, hey, Carol, thanks for joining. I'm going to grab my um, Tuxedo Black Memento ink again, which I should have done this the first time around, but I um, got busy talking and not paying attention to what I was doing. But we're going to stamp one of the little leaves on here. And I'm going to use Light and Dark Old Olive Stampin' Blends to color in the leaf. And again, I'm just going to start with the light. And my coloring is gonna be kind of similar on this one to what I did on the sunflower that I'm gonna to try to get around the edges here. And then we're just gonna color the whole thing in with the light Old Olive Stampin' Blends marker. And then come back in with the dark. And again, just trying to put a little bit of the shading on the areas that are already shaded by Stampin' Up. And then I'm gonna take my light and we'll blend them together a little bit again. Just trying to get it so that I don't have any real harsh lines on it. That's the only thing I'm trying to do um, when I'm blending the two, particularly on the leaves, since you can barely see them peeking out from under the sunflowers anyway. But that's it for the coloring on the entire card. Very easy. <laughs> I did do it twice. I did, well, I actually I did four leaves and then two sunflowers. Um, but again, it only takes a minute or two to um, get the, the sunflower colored. So it's really easy to do. All right, now in theory, if I have stamped this the way that I recall stamping it, I, you see my little blue dot. Hopefully it won't take me forever to figure out where my little blue dot goes on here. See, I tell you that this is gonna work and then I'm um, twisting it around and going, oh, there we go, okay. So I knew generally my blue dot was over on this side. 
I should have paid closer attention. I had put a little blue dot on my stamp, on the back of my stamp, and then I've got one here on my die. And that helps me, as long as you pay attention to which direction your blue dot is, then it's a little bit easier to get it lined up and you're not gonna spin, spin, spin your die around. So that's one little tip that I have when using this die set, um, is just to put a little blue mark, it's just blue Sharpie that I put on here, and um, then it makes it a little easier for the die cutting. So I'm gonna go off screen for a second, which my uh, die cutting machine is over here to my left. So I'll be off screen for a second and I'm gonna um, get it die cut here. Hopefully you are enjoying your Friday. It's a beautiful day here in New Jersey. The uh, sun is shining and it's gonna get up close to 70, I think. I don't know if it'll quite get there, but uh, I think it was 66 when I last looked. All right, so we got the flower cut here. And again, the edge of it, um, I didn't necessarily care because I knew I was gonna be trimming it on the card front. And then I'm gonna cut my leaf. Again, with the coordinating die from the sunflower's dies. Hopefully I'll get it on here and cut straight. All right, so we've got our little leaf cut. And I've got my piece of Pool party cardstock that I already had um, 71 in Connecticut. Yay, it's probably that warm here. It's oh, 075. And that probably is. Like I said, last time I looked, which is a little while ago, um, it was 66 already. So, yay. <laughs> so, um, I've got my piece of pool party cardstock that, um, again, I don't know how well you can see it. I have embossed with the Tasteful Textiles 3D embossing folder. And then I'm going to take um, this. This is the third from the largest of the stitch rectangle dies. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to kind of place it in the center of this uh, panel that I've already embossed. And then I'm going to take my sunflowers and I'm just going to glue them onto the panel. Um, and I'm using stamp and seal on the back of it. If you prefer liquid glue, you can do that. Um, and I'm just going to, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of tuck them underneath. Uh, the die that I have laying here on the paper. I'm not going to stick it down like super, super well yet, just because I may need to adjust it a little bit based on um, how everything lands on here. But I just wanted to get them um, onto the, the cardstock panel and somewhat close together in the center. I'm going to go ahead and smoosh these down now so that they're stuck down well. And then I've got my little leaves that um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, slide underneath my die cut flowers. And again, I just wanna make sure that they're gonna be inside the, ugh, my lid stick into my hand. I'm um, gonna be inside the die cut rectangle. So I'm just gonna do that. Take the little bit of stamp and seal again and slide them underneath. Um, when I was putting the adhesive on the back of the flowers, I tried not to go too far out on the, um, the to the edges of the flower so that I'd be able to slide my leaves underneath it. So, uh, thunderstorms, uh, yeah. I'd heard they're coming our way. I heard it's going to get, we're going to get some of that kind of yucky weather tomorrow. So not so much fun, but um, 35 more projects, just what you need. Of course you need them. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to slide that one underneath and going to put a little stamp and seal on this one. And again, do the same thing, slide it underneath here. And then I'll do the final placement and stick down. Maybe if I can get my fingers to work, there we go. And again, I'm just making sure that it's staying here um, how I want it to look, make sure that everything's basically inside the rectangle. All right, now I'm gonna do one final press down on this and make sure everything is stuck down well. And then I'm gonna take my die cutting machine and I'm just gonna run it right through like this. You can cut the double layered cardstock like this. Um, you do probably wanna roll it through and then roll it back again. That will help you to cut uh, cleanly, hopefully um, the first time through, and so you don't have to pick anything up and then try to readjust it and whatever. Generally, I find that if I roll it through once and roll it back through, that seems to cut through everything, all the layers that I needed to cut through. Um, and also when you're using the stitched rectangle dies, try to angle it through rather than putting it straight through because you'll hit, if it comes straight through, you hit this and there's a big bump with your machine and it's hard to get it to roll through. Or if you turn it at a little bit of an angle, it goes through much, much smoother. So that is my recommendation when you're doing your die cutting is to roll it through, roll it back, and then make sure you're running it through at a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna go do that now.
All right, and then we've got everything, hopefully should all be die cut here, which it looks like it cut it pretty well. Um, so we've got a nice little sort of framed look to our um, two sunflowers as well as the embossed panel. Now, when you run it through the die cutting machine, it does kind of smash the embossing a little bit on it, but you can definitely still tell that it's there and it still looks textured when you see it again in person. So, all right, I've got a couple of pieces of So Saffron designer series paper that I cut from the Subtles designer series paper pack. And I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back of my die cut rectangle. Uh, 48 in Oregon, eh, that's not so bad. So <laughs> that's better than freezing. So, all right, and I'm gonna line these up on my grid paper. This is about three quarters of an inch wide. It's a little bit wider than that probably because I just chopped a piece. And then it's about three inches long so that it will fit um, hopefully side to side on my die cut here. And what I'm trying to do is get it lined up straight so that there's about a quarter of an inch peeking out underneath it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just add a little adhesive to it lining it up here, hopefully, lining this up, there we go, and smooshing it down, and that's how I got that layer to, to stay on the card and have it be somewhat even. Um, and it also saves a little bit on your designer paper, because I know if you're like me, the pretty papers go first, um, so I do try to kind of conserve them a little bit rather than putting an entire piece back here that nobody's going to see anyway. I just cut the two ends, and then you can't tell because you stick it down to the card front and you know, nobody knows <laughs> except you and me. So, all right. So I've got um, my card front here, or my card base, and I'm just gonna stick it to the card base. Again, trying to make sure that it's centered top to bottom and side to side and sticking it down with a little bit of stamp and seal. Then I'm gonna grab my linen thread and I'm gonna wrap it around the card front twice and attempt to tie a bow. You know what, there's kind of a weird little snag in this. I'm gonna chop that off and get rid of that because I don't want a weird snag on my card front. Um, wrap it around the card front twice and snip it off and then tie a bow. I need to make sure that I'm fairly far over to the left-hand side of my card. When I'm using the thinner twines and that sort of thing and the, um, the linen thread, I usually tie a bow first um, because it's thin and small and nobody can really see it. And that holds my everything in place while I make the, the pretty part of the bow that you actually see. Um, and it helps me, you know, that I'm not holding, trying to hold and have, you know, four hands to tie the bow. So it makes it a little bit easier if you can start with a knot first to hold everything in place. And then you can work on your bow after that. All right, I'm gonna scooch that over just a little bit. And then let's grab some So Saffron cardstock. And the sentiment, I did change it. The original card had the thank you on it. Um, this one I'm turning into a let's celebrate you so it can be congratulations or a birthday or graduation or whatever it is that you want it to be. Um, I've got Versamark ink and Oh, glad you like the little border trick. That's, you know, it just, it has a little nice touch and you don't have to use up tons of paper, just a little little piece of it peeking out from underneath and it looks, looks good, so. All right, so I'm gonna take that and stamp it on So Saffron cardstock in Versamark ink, if I didn't say that already. Then I've got my copper embossing powder from the Metallics embossing powders and we are gonna sprinkle the image with the copper embossing powder. And then I'm gonna tap it off, um, check and make sure that I don't have any stray little flecks anywhere, and make sure that I've got good coverage, which it looks like I did. And then I'm gonna close that up so that I don't accidentally have it fling everywhere when I turn on the heat tool. And then I'm gonna get the heat tool. This is a Stampin' Up! heat tool. It's got two settings on it. Level one setting is for drying. So if you're doing things like watercoloring or something where the ink is a little slower to dry, um, use the level one setting. Level two setting is for heat embossing. So that's what I'm using is I've got it turned on to level two and I'm just giving it a second to warm up. And then I'm gonna take it and aim it at my project here. And as soon as it starts to get shiny and smooth, that means that it's done cooking. Hopefully it's starting, there we go. Um, and you don't want it to um, leave the heat tool in one spot for too long because you can actually burn your embossing powder and that's not usually a very good look. Um, it turns brown and yucky and gets really flat looking. All right, and once you've got the embossing done, give it a second to cool off because you can smear it um, if you touch the embossing too quickly. Um, and then let me grab my picture this dies. 
and we're gonna use that same opening. It's the center one in the picture of this dies. And I'm just gonna run this through the die cutting machine just like that. Um, like I said, the, you can use this die to cut out an entire panel of cardstock and have three openings in it, or you can use it like I am and just put it around a sentiment and um, you can do the same thing. I just usually try to cut it into a smaller piece of cardstock so I'm not wasting an entire huge piece of it by having it all chopped up. So, all right, so I'm gonna run this through the die cutting machine. Maybe, there we go. All right, there's my die cut sentiment. And then I'm gonna take a couple of stamp and dimensionals if I can find them. I know I have them here somewhere. And I'm gonna adhere that to the card front. Um, I actually cut my stamp and dimensionals in half, which I know makes some people crazy, but I actually like them. If you prefer the minis, you can definitely use the minis on this as well. Um, but I do recommend that you kind of um, slide the dimensionals out to the edges of the die cut, just because you've got twine or your linen thread running through here. And uh, if you put the dimensionals right on top of it, you kind of get a weird lump in your sentiment. Nobody wants a lumpy sentiment. So at least I don't. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna take that and adhere it to the card front. I'm just sliding it around the, the linen thread that I've already got there. And I'm gonna stick it down. And then I see that one of my pieces of linen thread is a lot longer, one of the tails is a lot longer. So I'm gonna trim that down so they're a little more even. And then I'm gonna grab a couple of the brushed metallic adhesive back dots. Um, for this project, the original one, I had used the, are those brass? I'm not sure what color they consider those. Um, the, the ones that are a little more greenish in tone. Um, there are also are copper and gold, which I think I actually kind of liked the way these looked on here. It's a little, again, just a little more muted uh, look. Not quite as bright as the, the copper, so I think I'm gonna stick with that look on here. And that's it for the card front. So again, like I said, it's super simple, um, really, really easy. The coloring is super simple. So I do hope that you'll get the stamp set and give it a try because you're gonna love coloring it. It's really, really simple. If I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> so, all right, on the inside of the card, I kept it pretty simple as well. I've got a piece of basic white cardstock that is cut to uh, four, and a, uh, four inches by five and a quarter. And then I've got a little strip that I trimmed away from the card front. Um, it's about a half an inch by about, I don't know, this one's about four and a quarter because it was, was the entire card front size. Um, I'm gonna adhere that down and then I'm just gonna trim away the extra piece here. All right, that is the extent of my fussy cutting skills and sometimes I can't even do that straight. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of stamp and seal to adhere this together. Um, again, all the details are going to be posted on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. And I will link up the blog post directly in the description of this video tomorrow as soon as it goes live. So you'll be able to find all the details um, and find the links to the promotions and things that are going on as well. All right, so let me do a little crease here with the bone folder across the top. And that's it for the card. So... Super simple. <laughs> Hopefully you love it. Um, I thought, I love the sunflowers. They are my favorite, one of my very favorite stamp sets that Stampin' Up! has right now. And I love that they brought back the bundle and giving you 20% off. It's a great deal. So definitely, definitely um, gra grab the stamp set bundle if you don't have it yet. So leftover frame from the, sun, the, from the sunflowers would be cool on the inside. Oh, I had thought about that, Jean. That would have been nice on the inside if I'd cut things straight. <laughs> definitely could have done that so that's a good idea I'll try to remember to do that next time so um, again I appreciate all being here um, and, and hanging out with me for a little bit on your Friday afternoon I will plan to be live on my Facebook page around two o'clock eastern time on next week Tuesday and then back here on YouTube live around two o'clock eastern time next week Friday have a wonderful rest of your week have a great weekend um, enjoy your day and if it's sunny and warm like it is here get out and enjoy some sunshine <laughs> all right we'll talk to y'all soon